we are all wearing them. I choose to wear mine underneath words so soft, and he chooses harsh and nasty. As I take my morning shot to start the day, I go out on my porch. It has a lovely view. Well, it used to. Ever since this threat came to the city, people have been losing their minds. Innocent people driven in the darkness. This day is about to come. Comes out certainly. Whatever you do, please do not yell or make any sudden movements. They will hear us. A woman about my age whispers frightenedly peeking out of the cracks of this abandoned warehouse. There with her were seven people, three women. Four men all gathered together dead still, armed with anxiety about them. She introduces herself as Arwen. The others, Benjamin, Curtis, Cadence, Christy, Jeff, Monty, and Lucas. Christy was a former cashier. Cadence, a babysitter who lost her brother on the way here. Me and my new acquaintance never spoke a word. Arwen goes into this panic state before getting out what happened to her. And Lucas was holding her in an embrace, trembling because they know exactly what was outside these doors. Curtis, take Arwen back into the armory, he says to Lucas. I will fill them in on what's going on. Please have a seat if you will, Curtis. We sit and ask. Tell me what the hell is happening. The rest of the group gathers around and sits with us. This is going to be extremely difficult to explain. But around midnight, there was a scream that scorched the sky with a high pitch. I thought it was just something outside, so I got up with my blinders closed and peeked out the window. Then I saw it. Saw it. Saw what? I don't know what its name is, but we call them as Tomans. Six to eight feet, varying height. Has the intervals between stone and earth. There is no transparency in the scent of its rock. When I saw it for the first time, it descended upon one of my neighbors, and its teeth ripped him apart. 